following is a WGN TV sports presentation. Yesterday, the Cubs were shut out for the 16th time. Maybe Don Kessinger, who played in the pregame, old timers game today, and doubled the right center. Maybe we can talk him into making a comeback. That was in the preliminary game. Today, with Greg Maddox on the hill for the Cubs, it looks like they have a great chance to beat the Houston Astros. So stay with us for every thrilling play coming your way in a moment. Chicago Cubs baseball on Channel 9. The Cubs are brought to you by Budweiser. Look for the Bud Summer Game details at participating retailers. By True Value. Got a tough job to do? You can do it with True Value hardware stores. Buick and your better Buick dealers. The home of American-made quality and value. By United. Chicago's hometown airline is proud to be the official airline of the Chicago Cubs. By your local 76 dealers, who invite you to go with the spirit, the spirit of 76. And by Pepsi-Cola, gotta have it. When a muffler goes, some people look for a cheap replacement. They think it costs less. Fact is, they can get a quality Midas muffler starting at $24.95. Fact is, a guaranteed economizer muffler starting at $24.95. Fact is, installed by experts starting at $24.95. So when somebody says they have a cheaper muffler than Midas, they're right. When they say they're better, fact is, they're wrong. Don't believe anybody ever beats Midas. <laughs> Not many things are more Chicago than United, but there are a few. United, proud to fly more Chicagoans than any other airline. Come fly Chicago's hometown airline. Come fly the friendly skies. of knowing Ernest. He's a troublemaker is what he is. He's a nut. The importance of catching Ernest. Well, we thought about killing him, kind of hated to go that far. Mayberry's wild man comes down out of the hills for an important week of his own. The importance of being Ernest. Beginning Tuesday night at 6.30 on Channel 9. Hello again, everybody. Harry Carey with Steve Stone from Rigby Field, where the Cubs wind up this homestand against the Houston Astros. And they have Greg Maddox going for his 15th victory of the year. Great day to pitch for Greg Maddox because the wind is blowing in, and Maddox, who doesn't give up the long ball very often anyway, is throwing today with about a 15-mile-an-hour wind. And usually that means a low-scoring game with Brian Williams going to the mound for the Astros. He's a young fellow who's not throwing the ball very well of late. But the Cubs have got to tune it up because they're facing an inspired Astro team. They certainly are, and Brian Williams is a pretty good prospect to have. You know, more important than the ball game, I like to talk about the uh, Maddox situation. You know, if he's going to uh, go into free agency at the end of the year, if the Cubs don't do anything, they're going to lose him for nothing but a draft choice. Can they afford that? Well, I don't think they can, Harry, even though it's a number one draft choice. It's not like in football or basketball where no. the number one draft choice steps right into the starting lineup. So Greg Maddox right now is a very valuable commodity. I still believe that Larry Himes thinks that he can sign Greg Maddox, and that's one of the reasons why they have made no attempt to deal him. But if it comes down, if Greg Maddox says that there is no way in the world he's coming back to the Chicago Cubs, I can't see any reason why they would continue to use him the rest of the year because he's, he's almost like a stock option, Harry. Every day that you keep him, 
his value lowers as far as the trade is concerned. You know, uh, I can't help but think of David Dombrowski, uh, who was then the general manager of Montreal, who gave Seattle three fine young pitchers. One of them pitched a, uh, another great ball game last night, has pitched a no hitter. To get Mark Langston with the idea that he figured not only if they got Langston, they had a chance to win, but also that they could sign him for next year. Well, we all know what happened. Langston uh, uh, didn't sign for the following year, and they didn't win it, and there were minus three young pitchers. Another question mark also is Andre Dawson. He's in the same situation as Greg Maddox. Now, obviously, he doesn't have the value that Maddox would have. However, there's a lot of teams in contention that would love to have the bat of Andre Dawson for the last six weeks of the season, and yet Andre Dawson is still here, still with the Chicago Cubs, and it looks like uh, they might not have, at least for the moment, Harry, any plans to sign him. Well, I uh, I can't understand that because uh, uh, without Dawson, you've got one outfielder, really, Sammy Sosa, and he has never hit that much. You need a right fielder, you need a left fielder. Uh, maybe they're better right fielders in the business than uh, Andre Dawson but the same that with the Chicago Cubs don't have them in their organization and uh, I, I certainly they must be thinking about signing them well this is why this part of the year is so interesting for everybody involved in baseball because we get down closer to the September 1st deadline and that's the deadline that you have to solidify your roster if you're going to postseason play there are some late August trades made the Cubs might be involved in a couple of those but that has to do with what Larry Himes is thinking about next year if he can sign one of these two players or if he can sign both of these two players then you don't have a problem Harry but if you can't sign them then you definitely have to entertain the idea of sending them along someplace else all right our national anthem taught me everything I know about cars. He only got one thing wrong. He never told me to bring my car to CarX for brakes. Yeah, I always went some other place. Why go to some other place? Come to CarX now and save $10 per axle on a professional brake job. $10. Do you think you get expert work like this for so little at some other place? What other place? Rattle, rattle, thunder, clatter, boom, boom, boom. Shh. Don't worry, call the CarX man. The hot-selling Buick LeSabre is about to disappear. LeSabre's trouble-free reputation has made it the best-selling full-size car in Chicagoland. But now the last of the 92s are rolling off the line, so your better Buick dealers special ordered an extra shipment for the biggest LeSabre sale of the year. Get a great deal, plus 3.9% GMAC financing for 48 months or giant factory cashback. These LeSabres are going fast, but there's still one waiting for you. See your better Buick dealer today. You can do it. Whether it's work or play, you can do it with help from True Value, where you always find personal service and low prices. Seal gaps with DAP acrylic latex caulking compound with silicone, just $1.19. You can do it. Get a quality True Test varnish brush or paint and trim pad, your choice, $3.88. For personal service and low prices, bring your family to ours. You can do it with True Value. Hello again, everybody. Harry Carey with Steve Stone and Tom Brenneman. 
The first pitch was thrown out by Emmett O'Neill, a Notre Dame man, uh, brother-in-law of Jack Barry, my dear friend. And I don't know about Emmett. <laughs> he gave it his all. He was throwing the ball out for Harry Carey's restaurant. I don't know that that's exactly one of the most heroic heaves in history. You know, Emmett, of course, is a right-hand man for uh, Senator Alan Dixon, a well-known advertising and public relations executive as well. All right, the Houston lineup is as follows. Biggio at second, Finley in center, Bagwell at first, Anthony in right, Caminiti at third, Gonzalez in left. Candell, the shortstop, Tobin C, the catcher, and Brian Williams is on the mound. Pepsi presents the Cubs defensive alignment of May and left to Sunzo in center and Dawson in right. Around the infield, Sanchez back at shortstop, Bouchelle at third, Sandberg at second, Grace at first. Maddox pitching and Wilkins catching, and Maddox going for number 15. The umpires are Harry Wendell stepped behind the plate, Randy Marsh at first, Dana DeMuth at second, and Gary Darling at third. You know, Steve, just to give you an idea about the greatness of Ryan Sandberg, he makes two errors in the game, and that's almost all you can hear, hear or read about. The Cubs lost five to nothing. If he'd have made two brilliant plays instead of two errors, if you don't score a run, you're still going to lose. But that's the price of being f famous at your position. And when you only make four errors in air uh, during a season, or six errors, as is the case this season, when you make two in one game, that's all they have on all the wire copy all across the country. The well, last time he made two errors in a game was 1989, so it is news, Harry, and I'm sure that Brian Sandberg would like to forget about yesterday's game, as would the Cubs. And with Maddox going to the mound today, it looks like there'll be a different outcome. Maddox making his 26th start of the year, his third against the Astros, 10 and 4 lifetime against Houston. There's a smash foul. Clark Biggio wasn't fooling around. First pitch, he fouled. Biggio is 3 out of 10 in this series, hitting 281, 6 homers, 23 runs batted in. He has 30 stolen bases, so it's a good idea to keep him off. A little weak swing. Sandberg throws Biggio out. He, he was full on that pitch, and he tapped it, kind of a half swing, to Sandberg who threw him out. If Maddox is right, the infield is going to get a lot of work behind him today and they love the way he works quickly. Infielders have to stay on their toes. Maddox is a sinker baller so he gets a lot of ground balls and on the mound he doesn't mess around. He doesn't take any long strolls. He just gets the ball and throws it and when he's in his rhythm he's a pleasure to behold. One out nobody on. Here's Steve Finley. He leaves the club and stole the bases with 31. Hey Arnie. You know who's out at Arlington today celebrating his birthday? Don Neistrom of River North Distributing. I know that you like to be out at Arlington Heights. I don't know how old Don Neistrom is today. And I, but I do know he's watching the game in, in the private box there at Arlington Heights, Arlington Racetrack. Finley swings and misses, one ball, two strike. Yeah. I hope he had the presence of mind to bet a double for us. He did. You lost, Arnie. You owe him 20 bucks. <laughs> Here's a pitch foul back. One ball, two strike. Maddox will throw his fastball in the mid to upper 80s. But his best pitch of late has been a very good straight change that he throws around 80 miles an hour. And it sinks out of the strike zone to the left hand hitters. There's a liner in the left field. Derek May, nice play. Derek May has made himself a good defensive left fielder as well as has made himself an effective hitter. Makes a nice play. Derek comes over on this ball slicing away from him and he was playing fairly shallow for Finley. And the outfielders can cheat a step or two today because the wind is blowing in rather briskly. So you can take advantage of that win knowing that unless the ball is really crushed it's not going to get over your head. Two out nobody on Jeff Bagwell hot shot right to Sanchez he's got it one two three we're accustomed to that from Greg Maddox. 
We go in the bottom of the first, no score. My brother, about to become a father. So how big can a crib be? Season tickets went on sale today, Mike. Yeah. Well, maybe next year. You've gone five years straight. Yeah. Is this about the kid? This kid's getting for free, you know. He's gonna be a little tight. Mike, this year's on me. Only one beer has the taste as genuine as the people who drink it. Budweiser. Now, the new little guy's going to every game, right? Bobby, it could be a girl. A girl? No lines longer than your flight. No. I can't seem to find your reservation. No incomprehensible contracts. No heater stuck on high in August. No hidden charges. And no lemons. National. No problem. Subscribe to Vineline, the official newspaper of the Cubs, and get a limited edition commemorative all-Ivy team print of the 28 greatest Cubs players of all time. For more information, call 312-404-CUBS. Meshack Taylor here with proof that real men love designing women. Now, Tom, you're a man who watches designing women. That's right. Every night during Monday Night Football, I tell the wife I have to clean the garage. I got a little portable out there so I can watch undisturbed. <laughs> you must have a very clean garage. Yes, Meshack, I do. Did you know designing women is going to be on five days a week? I'm going to have to get a new garage back. <laughs> real men love designing women. Premiering this fall on Channel 9. This is WGN-TV Chicago, your for kids' sake station. Harry Carey back at the ballpark. Here's the Cubs lineup presented by Pepsi. Desenzo leads off. Sandberg at second. Mark Grace at first. Dawson in right. May in left. Wilkins catching. Bouchelle at third. Sanchez the shortstop. And Greg Maddox with a record of 14-9. The defensive alignment for Houston, Gonzalez in left, Finley in center, Anthony in right, Caminiti, Candell, Biggio, and Bagwell around the infield. Williams, a big, tall right-hander, Pitchy and Tobinsey, the catcher. First pitch to DeCenzo. Right in there, good fastball, strike call. Houston got Brian Williams because there's a high pop foul out of play because uh, the Giants I think it was drafted Kevin Bass so they uh, they owed Houston a draft choice and they picked Brian Williams he's only 23 years old and they say he's looked very good Williams got off a good start, but the last three starts, he's given up 15 earned runs in just 12 innings of work. Now, he's got a pretty good fastball. It's upwards of 88 miles an hour. He will have some problems getting the curveball over the plate, but he's a good-looking young prospect. Now the pitch. There's a smash. Nice play by Biggio over the first one away. That brings up Ryan Sandberg. Sandberg hitting 297. Steve, last night I finally went out to see Joe Mondelli, and I didn't have to get a passport. It only took about 35 minutes to get there. It's in the city of Warrenville, and he's got quite a layout there. I didn't realize that's such an affluent uh, area, Warrenville. And uh, <laughs> they said the chief of police was looking for me, Robert Ledour. And the mayor did come over to say hello at Joe's restaurant. They have a lady mayor, Vivian Lund. And I think we've lost Joey Mondelli in, this, in the inner city. I think he's become a wealthy and affluent suburbanite. But his food is still as good as ever. And we certainly enjoyed that. And the prices aren't too much higher than they used to be. <laughs> Well, I hope he does okay out in Warrendale. He's a very nice fellow, and we wish him all the luck in the world. Now, wait a minute. I don't want you to get in the same kind of trouble I did. It's not Warrendale. It's Warrenville. Warrenville. Okay, Warrenville. 
there's a guy from Hornville watching the ball game. <laughs> That's not the chief of police, I know that. Chief of police is Robert Ledour. One out, nobody on. Sandberg takes a low and he walks it. Sandberg gets some base on ball. Big group of Cub fans watching today, headed up by Doug Michael, Greg Frygard, Bruce and Jack Fraser, and of course the ever present Phil Diagardi at the Stardust in Las Vegas. Speaking by bailing the double. At that time we went out to Las Vegas. I've been there for a couple of years now. Runner first, one out. You know that Diagardi is a great friend, uh, uh, not only of Arnie, but of Yosh Kawano. He's really a great. I've seen him uh, here in Chicago having dinner with Yosh. Who paid for it? I know Vic Giannotti <laughs> didn't pay for that one <laughs> because they were at Giannotti's. One ball, no strikes. See, I mention every restaurant I can think of on this program, even though I have one of my own. One ball, no strikes. Hey, happy birthday to Joyce Cohen, who's 18 today, and to Janet Cohen, whose birthday's Wednesday. They're sisters of Mandy Cohen, who works with us here in the booth. And she's looking forward to enjoying her 16th birthday. Mandy. At least she looks like she's going to enjoy her 16th birthday. There's a few people in Chicago who are getting a little nervous about that reference to which birthday it is, Harry. <laughs> There's a pitch in there, a strike call. I don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, one strike. Cardinals are leaving in Montreal. Whoa. Do you think that the Cardinal fans who be could be moaning the trade for Ken Hill, the fine pitcher, who's developed into a fine pitcher from Montreal. The Cardinals traded him for Andres Galarraga. Well, everybody's been moaning about that deal, but not last night. The Cardinals were losing, and Galarraga came up in the seventh inning, and with the bases loaded, hit a grand slam. And the Cardinals won the game 6-4. Two balls, one strike. Well, it's just a shame that the Cubs haven't played a little better baseball because the Atlanta Braves are certainly helping out the Cubs with their two games against Pittsburgh, where they've beaten them fairly soundly. Pirates are leading today, though, one nothing in a fourth. There's a base hit right field. Boy, Sandberg almost got hit by the ball. He had to stop and let it go by. He leaped to get out of the way, and it's runners at first and second. By making the jump and avoiding being hit, it cost him an extra base. He probably would have wound up at third base. There's Rhino doing a little dance step, trying to get out of the way of that one. And the Cubs making the first inning. Very tough on Brian Williams. Mark Grace, pretty good swing, hitting it through the big hole open on the right side with Bagwell having to hold first base with Sandberg aboard. So runners are on first and second. Boy, a couple of runs in the first inning would look good, especially with Maddox pitching. Boy, he had been tremendous. Curve outside. If Maddox wins today, be second in victories at Tom Glavin of the Braves, who has 18 victories, 12 of them in a row. If the Cubs have scored a few runs, I wonder how many victories Maddox would have. I bet you certainly more than 18. I think he's been shut out six of his nine defeats. He's lost nine times, six times. He was shut out. There's no way you can win if your team doesn't score a run, at least. 
Cubs have never faced Williams but they're learning in the first inning that he can't get the breaking ball over consistently and if he doesn't do that he's going to have some problems the only thing he's been able to get over the plate so far has been the fastball and that only on occasion birthday greetings to Jamie Sullivan and a happy 10th birthday to Tommy Chillick Chillick ball three to throw oh, they're going to get him so boy on a close play and Tomlinson almost Pick Sandberg off second. Tomlinson has got boy. a very good arm, and he shows it to Ryan Sandberg right here. Dana Demuth on the call, and fortunately, the hand to Sandberg Ooh. in just before the tag. Watch it again. Quick throw and a very good throw, and a break for the Cubs as Sandberg straight off second. Ball four. The bases are loaded with only one out. And here is Derek May coming up. The first home run he ever hit in the major leagues, as I recall, a couple years ago, was with the bases loaded. Hit it over across the street on Sheffield Avenue. Bob Cluck coming out. He's the pitching coach of the Houston Astros. He wants to settle down his young right-hander. It was a rapid rise through the system last year for Brian Williams. He made four different stops at Osceola, Jackson, then Tucson before he came to Houston. His minor league record is very impressive. It's 14 and 7, the ERA 389. Now a different story in the major leagues. And not a bad record at 4 and 4, an ERA just over 4 at 402, and that's in 12 games. But he's digging himself into a hole here early in the game because of his lack of control. A happy 12th birthday to Steve Beitzel from Milwaukee. A lot of youngsters on hand. Here's Tracy Cooper of Aurora. And Duncan Jones, son of one of the WGN crew members, Scott Jones. Duncan's only one years old today. Boy, again, he's high and outside. He can hardly walk Derek May. There's no place to put him. The bases are loaded. One out. Brian Williams. Big, tall right-hander. Smash hard foul. Wow, almost got the security guard down there. He's sitting on the tarp cover. That's what Billy Williams and Jim Lefevre were trying to impress upon Derek May. He had a tendency to float the bat out through the strike zone, hit a lot of balls to left and left center field. But he said, when you're ahead of the pitcher and you know a fastball is coming, take a good aggressive swing. And that was about as aggressive as you can get. One ball, one strike. Swung and he missed. He had a good swing again, but he missed this time. And now he's behind on the count. One ball, two strikes. Bases are loaded. Rick Wilkins will be next. Ryan Williams is set. Ground ball. Out at second for one. Out at safe and first. A run score. One to nothing Cubs. And so Ryan Sandberg can try it in the dugout and say to Greg Maddox, there's your lead, now hold it. REI number 26, and the Astros come very close to turning this double play, but Derek May is hustling down the line. You can see Kandel coming across to make the throw, but he can't get it there in time, so they don't complete the 3-6-3, and the Cubs go on top. Andre Dawson with really no shot at breaking up this double play. Kandel has a clean shot at the throw, but it comes a little late. Close, but close only counts in horseshoes. Strong and he missed. Runners at first and third. Hey, the rooftops well populated. The one uh, in foul territory on Sheffield is empty, though. But the one that ordinarily would be empty is got a lot of people on it again. I don't know. They, boy, they got a ringside seat up there. 
There's a drive by Wilkin. Way back. Nice play by Gonzalez. Louis Gonzalez, my fine play. However, the Cubs get a run. One hit. Two men left on base. At the end of 1-1 to nothing, Chicago.